subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. Hello. In this video, we will discuss another poem from your course that is the canonization. This video will give you a brief introduction to the poem, line by line explanation and then we will also discuss the canonization as a metaphysical poem. Canonization is a Catholic process of being made a saint by the Pope. Such title would have been provocated during the time it was written. During Elizabethan age, people practicing Catholics were persecuted and their saints were executed. Even John Donne's own brother Henry died in prison who was arrested for giving sanctuary to a proscribed Catholic priest. The poem was first published in 1633 in his collection of Songs and Sonnets. The poem has five stanzas and each stanza consists of nine lines. The rhyme pattern of the poem is A B B A C C C A A. The poet in the poem wishes to be canonized religiously for the way they love each other. The poem may be written against the criticism that he received for secretly marrying Anne More. For God's sake, hold your tongue and let me love, or chide my palsy or my gout. My fire grey hairs or unit fortune float. With valid your state, your mind with arts improve. Here the word chid means to criticize or blame somebody. Palsy is a shaking disease. Gout is also a disease that causes painful swelling in the joints. In the opening lines, the poet is against the behavior of the addressee who is interrupting the poet's business of love. So the poet tells him to be quiet and let him love. Rather than distracting him from love, the poet tells the addressee that he can criticize poet's palsy or gout. The poet tells the addressee that he can also make fun of his old age or his lost fortune. The poet suggests the addressee that he can increase his wealth or can improve his mind by learning different arts like poetry or music. Take you a course, get you a place, observe his honor or his grace or the king's real or his stamped face, contemplate. what you will approve so you will let me love stamped means printed or designed contemplate means to think deeply the poet continuously suggests his addressee either to do a course or a job the addressee according to the poet can observe the honor or grace of a judge or the king's real or stamped face the poet tells him whatever pleases him he can do but to leave the poet alone to love his blood alas alas who is injured by my love what merchant ships have my sighs drowned who says my tears have overflowed his ground when did my cold a flower spring remove the word cold means low temperature of a body the poet then raises some rhetorical questions to highlight how his love can be dangerous to others the poet wonders who could have been harmed by his love neither his sighs he breathed in love have drowned any of the merchant ships nor have his tears caused floods in the land his colds never delayed the advance of the spring when did the heats which my veins fill add one more to the plaguey bill soldiers find wars and lawyers find out still litigious men which call this move though she and i do love litigious men men who are ready to take arguments to court His fever never added any death to the plague list. The poet mean to say that his love has not affected the world in any way. Though the soldiers will continue fighting in the wars and lawyers will continue to deal with the litigious men, the poet and his beloved will continue to love each other. So Dunn has highlighted many disasters in this stanza and none of which could be caused by love. Call us what you will, we are made such by love. Call her one. Me another fly. We are tapers too, and at our own cost die. And we in us find the eagle and the dove. Taper is a wood that is used for lighting fires or lamps. Here it also means candles. The poet then tells the addressee to call them anything, whatever he likes. They are not bothered by such criticism. The poet then tells the addressee that he can call them moths. They are candles too, and die at their own cost. The poet says that they have the combined force of eagle and dove in them. The eagle represents masculine gender and dove represents feminine gender. 
The phoenix riddle had more wit by us, we two being one or it. So, to one neutral thing both sexes fit. We die and rise the same and prove mysterious by this love. Phoenix is a magic bird that lives for several hundred years before hunting itself and then being born again from its ashes. The poet then continues to use image and tells us that Phoenix has more wit than the poet and his beloved. The eagle and the dove are united and have formed one neutral Phoenix. They are Phoenix because if they are burnt in love, they will rise again from their ashes and will be proved mysterious rider like Phoenix by love. We can die by it, if not live by love, and if unfit for tombs and hers, our legend be it will be fit for worse, and if no piece of chronicle we prove, we will build in sonnets pretty rooms. Hers is a long vehicle used for carrying a coffin. Chronicle means historical record of events. The poet then says that they can die by love if they are not able to live by it, and if their love is unfit for tombs and hers, it will be fit for poetry. If they could not make any history, they will build pretty rooms in love poems. As well, a well dressed urn becomes the greatest ashes as half acre tombs, and by these hymns all shall approve as canonized for love. Well dressed means skillfully constructed. Urn is a container for holding ashes of a dead person. Just as a well-made urn can hold ashes of a dead person like half acre tombs, they will home in hymns. Then all will approve their canonization for love. People will remember them as saints of love. Who needs help in love will pray to them, and thus invoke us, you whom, reverend love, made one another's hermitage, you to whom love was peace, that now is rage. Here the word invoke means to mention somebody's name as an example. Hermitage is a place where a hermit lives or lived. As they will turn saints, people who need help will approach to them and will pray to them. The lovers of next generation will invoke them for their exemplary love. People will speak that their love was each other's hermitage. People will accept that their love was peaceful but now it has turned rage. Who did the whole world's soul contract and draw into the glass of your eyes? So made such mirrors and such spies that they did all to you, epitomize, countries, towns, courts, beg from above, a pattern of your love. The word epitomize means to be a perfect example of something. The love of the canonized lovers reduced the soul of the world into each other's eyes. The eyes of the canonized lovers have transformed into mirrors. People look into the mirrors in order to get a reflection of their pure love. Their love is a perfect example of ideal love. Countries, towns and courts beg for such pattern of love. The Canonization as a Metaphysical Poem The poem deals with the subject of love which makes it a metaphysical poem. Canonization is an example of metaphysical poetry because it is abounded with conceits. The poet has employed conceits like flies, tappers, the eagle, the dove, and the phoenix. The poem is argumentative in which the poet claims that he and his lover will be canonized for love and the lovers of future will invoke them for their exemplary love. Another feature of metaphysical poetry is that it begins abruptly. The canonization is also earnest and abrupt which catches our attention. The use of conceits, allusions from the medieval philosophy of metaphysics, a dramatic situation and an impassioned monologue make it a metaphysical poem.